Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Zether here back at it again to drop part four to what if Deku and Bakugo fused. Now, you guys already know the routine. I'm gonna tell you guys that there's gonna be a sponsor of the video, yada, yada, yada. You guys know what's up. On a real note though, there is something that I do wanna tell you guys, which is that I will not be uploading videos for three days. Like three days straight, there will be absolutely zero videos. And the reason for that is because I'm actually going to be going on a family trip with my girlfriend and you know i'm trying to go have some fun and not really have to worry about uploading videos i was actually going to pre-record and schedule a bunch of videos but i simply did not have the time with school and the gym and videos and all that stuff a little hard to do so uh i think i'm just gonna give you guys a nice little video today and after that there will be a little bit of a time that i will not be making videos i might might this is this is a maybe might drop a couple of TikToks, so in case you guys want to go see that, then follow me on my TikTok, link down below in the description. But with that being said, let's get into the intro and then get started. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Okay, so like I had said on the previous part, Katsuya would quite literally shoot an explosion at Shigaraki as he would blitz at Shigaraki's direction, quite literally shooting an explosion so powerful, almost all of Shigaraki's clothes quite literally got blown off in the explosion and he got sent flying. Luckily, however, Kuragiri was there to catch Shigaraki inside a portal, and the last thing that Shigaraki would see is Katsuya standing there with one of his arms quite literally broken and like standing there almost in the same All Might pose that he had whenever he fought against All For One. At this point, All Might would come in with that same look on his face of anger as he looks towards the direction of his successor Katsuya with his arm down almost mangled and a villain just being thrown right into a warp gate all might would kind of smile as he would look at his successor's direction and say that this has been one of your very first trials i hope that you can continue to do this with more things down the road i may not always be there to protect you young midoriya or young katsuya as at this point he would quite literally uh just run over towards katsuya's direction as he would fall over and catch him and katsuya would look at all might saying <laughs> finally made it old man he would cough a little bit and be like, <laughs> I'm glad you're here, as he would quite literally proceed to pass out. At this point, what would happen next is Shigaraki would get out of there. The villain cleaning up uh, stuff would all happen. And at this point, Katsuya would literally be taken away in a hospital stretcher. Now, it's really not as deep as it seems. Uh, Recovery Girl would simply just give Katsuya a kiss. And about in about one day of just having his arm in a cast, his arm would fully recover. After that happens, what would end up actually going down is they're all informed about having a one complete full break without school in order to simply get their minds in check and forget about this horrible, horrible situation. Oh, and quick thing, if during this video I sound like I have a, a straight up D-I-C-K up my nose, I'm sorry, but I'm battling demons with the allergies that I'm having right now. So uh, if that's a problem, I do heavily apologize. That being said, what would end up happening afterwards is Katsuya would essentially end up making his way towards um, towards the park. Now, when Katsuya is actually at this park, a girl would show up. Now, this girl would have black hair, pretty long, by the way, and she would show up in some leggings and a little cute uh, crop top, I guess. I, I don't know, just whatever, whatever's there, you know what I mean? Now, this person would obviously be Momo Yayorozu. Now, when Momo arrives, she would look at uh, Katsuya's direction saying, uh, what a coincidence, you're at this park too. As Katsuya would be like, what, you're here? Just questioning Momo being like, why are you at this old dump? Like, I I'd expect you to go to a much better park than this. As she's like, no, I've always came to this park since I was a little girl. Literally making up a lie just so that it seems like she's there by coincidence and not because she just like completely tracked Katsuya down to get some alone time with him. And at this point, Katsuya would quite literally just be scrolling through his social media, reading all of his latest comments, asking if there's any updates with training with All Might. 
Deku would upload a picture of him and All Might kind of sticking their tongues out with their fists like in front of them as like a, a cool little Instagram post that he just kind of had to kind of let people know that, you know, he's he's doing all right. And at this point, everybody would be very happy and the media actually didn't end up finding out or blowing the USJ incident out of proportion. What ends up happening is a lot of people would question what happened with all that, but Deku would give very limited information. Now, Katsuya and Momo would essentially be sitting on these swing sets as they're just having a little bit of a talk. And it's at this point that Katsuya would actually realize Momo's actually a pretty chill girl. Like, before, he never truly had thought about it, but Momo actually does genuinely seem like a pretty decent human being. And so, at this point, he and Momo would continue conversing, and Momo would eventually bring up the big question, you wanna go somewhere? At this point, Katsuya would be like, sure, why not? I don't have anything to do today. And at this point, they would proceed to quite literally hang out for that entire week. He would message Momo back and forth, back and forth, and Katsuya and Izuku himself would proceed to just kind of hang out during those entire days. During that time, obviously Katsuya did some light training and sparring with All Might. However, most of his time when he wasn't doing any of that was quite literally spent with Katsuya. At this point, what would end up happening is he would continue talking to Momo and they would continue building more and more relationship during this one week off. During this time, Katsuya would be thinking that, you know, they're just flirting it up a little bit, but that they're just like basically friends. Because at this point, he hasn't even kissed Momo yet, but he's been having such a good time with Momo. You know what I mean? Like he's been doing his thing, Momo's happy, and she's thinking that they are already a couple like i don't know if you guys have ever had this but where you're talking to someone and you're not a couple but you're also like but you're also like not also talking to other people in flirty ways i guess you could say like like you're not a couple but you also let people know that you're not you're not out for the take you know what i mean so what ends up essentially happening is katsuya would finally end up going back to class after this one week would finally be over and when he does return, what ends up happening is immediately a bunch of the girls from class 1A would begin to like just jump on this man Katsuya and be like, oh my God, this, this and that. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I cut the video and I completely forgot where I was. So I'm just gonna kind of pick up from nowhere. I had to blow my nose really, really badly. And I ended up just cutting it like mid sentence. So whatever, whatever I was saying, a lot of the girls are pretty much flirting it up with Katsuya and Momo let's just say she doesn't take too kindly to any of that whatsoever so what ends up essentially happening is katsuya and momo um end up being pulled to the side momo pulls katsuya to the side and begins to question katsuya on what he thinks he's doing like she would begin to tell uh, katsuya that she thought that they were building something special saying that why are you flirting with all these girls and katsuya would be like but i, I we're not as he's like i'm just talking to my classmates can i not do that he would begin to see that momo is a little crazy and he would literally walk away from her being like yeah i'm gonna give you some time are you on your days as momo gets enraged but she just simply puts on a smile and says that she doesn't know what she's thinking about she she was just being crazy trying to get deku or katsuya sorry to think that she maybe not, might not be as crazy as Katsuya's thinking. So Katsuya would go back and at this point Aizawa would walk into the classroom and tell everybody, all right, listen up everybody. Today, you guys will now have one day, starting from today. Today is your only day to prepare for the UA Sports Festival, which will be held tomorrow. He would look at the class as he begins to essentially explain what the USJ even is, saying that the USJ is an opportunity for all of the students to showcase all of their abilities and be put in for internships, where they will be gaining more and more experience for the world that lies ahead. Everybody would get very hype, or Raka being the most hype out of all of them, saying, let's do this! And her radiant energy would honestly just be like going throughout the classroom as a whole. And obviously, nothing really would end up happening during this time period. All that really does end up occurring is... Okay, okay, okay. Quick intermission in the video. Editing's out of here. This is a, a lot of days after I just recorded that previous part. On the last snippet that you guys heard, like the previous 8 to 10 minutes, I quite literally sounded like I had a, a, a genuine... Um, 
a rod that guys have up my nose, like just shoved in there to the deepest part that I could possibly get to. So I just genuinely want to say, I am so sorry guys that I hate that I had you guys listening to that and I, j I just let it happen, but I cannot be bothered to record that part. So uh, please bear with me for that part and uh, let's get back into the story. Okay is they have the rest of class and from there they basically all end up essentially going home now on this day all of them are pretty much hyped telling all their, their families and parents that they are going to be holding the ua sports festival very very soon and obviously with that comes a lot of people being very hype about it you know what i mean everybody's fiending to do a really good job the next day and so when katsuya goes home he looks at mitsuki and she's like so boy what did you do at school today Katsuya walks over to her and says, well, you'll be happy to hear it because tomorrow you're actually going to see me in action. Uh, Mitsuki would be like, what? I'll see you in action as Katsuya explains about the USJ. And she's like, I mean, the US Sports Festival. And she immediately calls Inko and says, Inko, Inko, tomorrow we got to go watch our, our boy at, at, at the sports festival. Inko's like, oh, my God, I, I get to watch Katsuya? As you know, they're both geeked over this. And at this point, Katsuya is basically just pretty happy at the fact that both of his moms can now finally get along. Because at the beginning, things were very, very patchy. Like, when I say patchy, I mean it. Like, Mitsuki and Inko had a very hard time sharing Izuku at the very beginning of this amazing little relationship that they all share together. That being said though guys, the way that all of this essentially ends up playing out is Katsuya and everybody else ends up finally making it to the UA Sports Festival Arena. Now when they're all there, they're obviously changed into their PE outfits and when they're all looking around, Katsuya just sitting there in the back just thinking, wow, there's a lot of people here. Katsuya would also just be thinking in his head like, yeah, this is going to be pretty easy though because it's like, I mean, he has explosions and all this stuff. So he kind of knows that like, he got it like that, I guess you could say. So if you guys were like in his perspective, essentially, he's just kind of like pretty confident about everything and he's genuinely happy with that, though, obviously midnight would come in and she would begin to be all like, all right, guys, so are you guys ready? You know what I mean? She'd start hyping them all up. And at this point, she would say our student Katsuya Midoriya is going to be coming up to speak on the podium as Katsuya would pretty much just walk over towards midnight, give a pretty lit speech and everybody would go berserk. They'd be like, oh, my God. It's Katsuya! Oh, you know what I mean? Like, they're all having a pretty good time thinking that, you know, Katsuya is all this and that. Because if you guys don't remember, he is a little bit, just a teeny tiny bit Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube famous. Because he uploads clips of him training with All Might. And all of them already know how powerful he is. Or think that they know. But they've only seen little snippets of how strong he can be. So, with that, the crowd finally goes silent after, like, Midnight is able to calm everybody down by saying that they need to, uh, you know, calm down before the next event would start. After this, everybody, and I mean everybody, would quite literally go towards the starting line as they all pretty much just get into their starting positions. And from here, we would have a countdown. Three, two, one. The starting pistol would blast and everybody would begin to go as fast as they possibly can. Immediately, Katsuya would look at Todoroki's direction and in a split second would decide that he needs to blast off immediately. Todoroki would shoot his eyes as a bunch of people would get stopped, but Katsuya, however, would actually blast up into the air and begin to spin like a literal torpedo. As he proceeds to hold one hand out and say, let's try this again, a zero pointer would stand right before him as Katsuya would say, one million percent? Ah, uh, how it's a uh, impact! He would blast into the gigantic robot, busting a huge hole in it and causing a combustion of all of the other robots to just explode. Everybody who's behind, including Todoroki, would get blown back by this immense heat and like just explosion as Katsuya would blast off smiling. He would have little tiny compressed explosions blasting behind himself as he's propelling himself as fast as he possibly can. Now each one of these explosions is about the size of a genuine house, so they are massive meaning Katsuya is very very fast. Not only that, but he also has full cowling, so he quite literally whenever he doesn't land on an explosion he just jumps on the ground and jumps back up as he shoots more and more explosions. So uh, when I say my man Katsuya is basically winning. He's uh, he's pretty much just winning. After this, he ends up clearing literally all of the obstacles. And from here, everybody else finally ends up making it towards the little finish line. Todoroki ended up getting second place. Ida, third. 
and the rest you guys can pretty much just organize it however you guys would want with that said though what ends up going down after this is midnight announces that they will now be having cavalry battles as of everybody in like the stage area would pretty much just be told to uh, essentially like pick partners and then they're going to be having the little event as soon as that happens katsuya is actually going to be bombarded with a bunch of people who actually want to be on his team mainly girls but what, it, what katsuya would actually end up doing is saying that he definitely wants momo on his team so that's the first person who he ends up choosing after this he would end up choosing uraraka and after that he would end up choosing one more person this being May Hatsume, after she bombarded him saying, please let me show off my babies on your team. You know, she started saying all this and that. And at the end of everything, he was like, all right, whatever. Seeing as there's no Deku here or Bakugo or Toto or, um, or Deku or Bakugo here. And it's like a mixture of like Deku. It has all of their quirks, all of their intelligence and all that stuff. So he ends up coming with a strategy of using Hatsume's stuff to pretty much have something very similar to what they did in canon. However, one thing that they would do is have Momo create this gigantic like seating thing, like a saddle, like as you could say that he would use to ride on top of the three people that will be carrying him. And he also created something so that his explosions could be funneled and he won't be causing any fr fire friendly damage. You know what I mean? So as soon as the match starts, Todoroki would immediately try to lunge over towards Katsuya's direction. But what would end up happening is Katsuya would actually proceed to shoot a giant explosion at Todoroki's direction, which would almost cause Todoroki to be blown off of his uh, carriage thing. And after seeing another team actually fall, he would notice that that team elim got eliminated immediately. So Todoroki ended up realizing that unless he wants to get eliminated, he should probably wait for to fight Katsuya in the next battle. So he would proceed to start collecting a bunch of other headbands, and Katsuya would start getting bombarded by weaker characters who he was able to knock down pretty easily. At one point, he pretty much ended up establishing that, that nobody was going to touch him, and that's kind of how that first portion of the battles go. After this, the other second years and third years are the ones who end up going up to the competition, and they're all essentially told that they're all going to be needing to essentially, let's see, they're all pretty much going to be needing to like uh, clear out because they're going to be holding the second year and third year stuff, and so everybody would pretty much clear out. Now, when everybody does end up clearing out, they essentially see this giant billboard on the roof. And they look up there and Katsuya's like, what, what does that say? Now, at this point, it would quite literally be a picture of All Might with a smile on his face and him literally pointing towards his shirt. Now, this shirt would be made out of very, very fine material. Material from Fandom, the sponsor of today's video. Now guys, if you guys haven't heard about fandom, which on obviously you guys probably have, seeing as you've probably seen a couple of my videos, and if you guys have seen the previous parts, you know exactly what fandom is. A bunch of right now should be a bunch of videos essentially showing a bunch of the products that fandom has to offer to you guys. They offer a variety of options from he a heck of a ton of shonen anime which you guys can choose from. They have all the popular stuff like MHA, Naruto, uh, Demon Slayer, they have uh, Seven Deadly Sins, they pretty much have everything you guys can think of. And not only that, but they're not only anime merch apparel website, you can even buy yourself some nice little Spider-Man merch or Marvel stuff because they sell a ton of things. It's not just limited to anime. So please go down below, use code Zether at checkout for an extra 10% off. And with that being said, let's get back into the story. So with that said, guys, what ends up essentially happening is all of them see the sign and, you know, Katsuya is like, yeah, I, I have a hoodie by them. They're actually pretty good. They all end up walking off and they're like, eh, you know, pretty cool. And Katsuya would end up breaking the fourth wall. As he says, seriously, go buy fandom. It helps the channel out a lot. OK, bye. As everybody would end up leaving. And at this point, Katsuya would be in the waiting room where, of course, Todoroki would come in and would begin to tell him how he's basically going to crush Katsuya. Katsuya hearing this would just l let out a little bit of laughter as he simply thinks that there's no way that Icy Hot truly thinks he has what it takes to beat him. Katsuya would smile and think that, well, I mean, I guess anybody can really dream. As Katsuya would proceed to essentially, like, just have a pretty good time and he ends up just looking at Todoroki's direction, you know what I mean? Todoroki would give him like an angry look, but Katsuya would not mind this and he would proceed to essentially like uh, just kind of stay where he's at and sip on his apple juice because why not? 
Now at this point, Katsuya would be sitting in the lounge room and Katsuki and Mitsuki, no not Katsuki, but Mitsuki and Inko would bust into the room being like, Katsuya! And they're both wearing shirts that say Katsuya on them. And they bust in and they're like, you're doing so great. You know what I mean? They start pretty much telling him that he's doing this well and that they're so proud of him. And Katsuya is just letting out these awkward little laughs. You know what I mean? Like he's literally being squeezed to death by two moms. And he's just sitting there like, uh, yeah. Now at this point, Asashi and, uh, you know, Mitsuki's husband are just standing there by the door, just looking at Kats Katsuya, just get bombarded by hugs. And Katsuya's like, hey guys, as they're just like, what's up? And at this point, they say, brought you some snacks. As Katsuya is quite literally given a bunch of Mexican candy, and he proceeds to gobble, 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 gobble. As he proceeds to eat all that stuff, and he cannot take the heat. He proceeds to grab milk and chug on that thing. He's like, <gasps> too spicy. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But seriously, though, he does drink some milk because it was a little too spicy. But uh, after that, what ends up happening is he ends up going towards the arenas where the first match is announced. Katsuya Midoriya versus Shinso Hito Hitoshi Shinso or something like that. I think that's Shinso's name. Anyways, that out of the way, what ends up essentially happening is Katsuya ends up hearing wind of what Shinso's quirk is because of the fact that Ojiro ended up, of course, telling him that he talked to him and from there he doesn't remember what happened. So Katsuya is simply thinking that he might have to just not say a word to Shinso. So as soon as the match starts, not even to like try to elongate this or anything or to try to breeze by this, what would pretty much just happen is Katsuya would think, hey, if he talked to him and something bad happened, I won't talk to him and I'll be cautious. He proceeds to blast an explosion towards Shinso's direction. Shinso was thrown off guard before he could even say anything and Katsuya proceeded to throw an explosion, launching Shinso into the grassy area where he then lands and starts pounding on the ground thinking, damn it! As, you know, he's simply thinking that there's no way he'll make it into the UA, like, hero course anymore. And Katsuya would walk over towards Shinso as he would ask, what's your quirk? Shinso would begin to look at, uh, you know, Katsuya as he's like, what do you care? As he walks off and Katsuya would simply think that, uh, my bad. As he proceeds to walk off and the next battles would all happen. At this point, the next battle would be announced and it would actually be Katsuya Midoriya versus Shoto Todoroki. However, if you guys want to see the next part of today's video, then you guys will need to smash seven likes. After you guys smash that, I promise guys, I'm going to be dropping the next part of this and there will probably be about two more parts of the series before it finally reaches its conclusion. That being said though, guys, I love every single one of you guys. It has been your boy Zether signing out and um, yeah, I hope you guys go on and have an awesome day. Peace.